Welcome to Contributing to Open Source PowerShell Projects. Uh, this presentation will be using GitHub for Windows and not Git the command line. Makes it a lot easier. So on today's agenda, I'm going to be doing an intro that includes some definitions. I'll do the demo of creating a pull request in GitHub, and then I'll answer your questions. The tutorial that I will be following along with is at dbatools.io slash first pull. So if you want to follow along or if you just want to revisit it later, then that would be the web address. So again, that's dbatools.io slash first pull and read it all the way down to the bottom because I included some good stuff at the bottom as well. So my name is Chrissy Lemaire. I am a Microsoft PowerShell MVP. I'm also a senior systems engineer and DBA for GDIT at NATO Special Ops headquarters in Belgium. I've worked with SQL Server since 1999 and PowerShell since 2005. I am on Twitter. I have three handles there, actually a couple more, but these are the top three. So I have at CL, I have PSDBA tools, which is the Twitter account for this project that I'll be telling you about today. And then also closed as fixed, which is a Twitter bot that celebrates each of the Microsoft Connect items, that's their ticketing system, that have been closed or resolved as fixed. I also have a blog at netnerds.net and a recipe website at realcajunrecipes.com. I am Cajun, straight from Louisiana, and I run the site with my mom and best friend. Now, I'm also a member of the SQL Server Community Collaborative, and we are a GitHub organization that is SQL Server centric, and we really advocate for open sourcing really cool tools and putting them in this organization. The two primary projects in the SQL Server Community Collaborative are DBA Tools and DBA Reports. But we also do have a couple others like Invoke SQL CMD2 by Warren Frame. So am I a GitHub expert? Totally not, but I have used GitHub and GitHub for Windows to cultivate a successful open source project. And ultimately what I really want is for you to understand how to get your code into repositories like ours, like the PowerShell teams, and like any other very large or very small open source project. So before we begin, I do want to share a few definitions that I'll be using later on in the presentation. So the first one that we're going to start with is a fork and a fork is a personal copy of a repository that lives on your account and forks allow you to freely make changes to a project without affecting the original. Now what's really cool is that the fork, it's not like downloading a zip and you don't have this like metadata attached or anything to it. It does remain attached to the original, which both allows you to submit a pull request, but it also allows you to keep your files, your local files up to date with the original repository. So you can just hit sync. And if there have been any additions made to the branch that you're working with, it will go ahead and download those changes. The next is a clone. So a clone is a copy of a repository that lives on your computer and a clone, um, whenever you first look at it, it, just looks like all of the files, but there's actually a hidden folder called .git that has all of these differentials and, and things like that. So it's a repository. You can't just create a new folder and expect it to be a repository. It does expect all of that information to come with it and it's hidden. Next is a branch. So a branch is a parallel version of a repository. Um, it is contained within the repository, but it doesn't affect the primary or master branch, which allows you to work freely without disrupting the live version. Now, I know you might be thinking if you're new to this, I have no idea what you're saying. You're just saying words. And for me, this really didn't solidify until I started using branches. So um, it's okay if you don't understand that, uh, you know, it is, it's a parallel version. Uh, you can just switch between branches and it switches your workspaces and actually changes your files, which I'll show you later. Um, so yeah, it's, it's an integral in, it's an integral part of the way that we work. And I have confidence that you will understand it once we are done with this presentation. 
Next is a commit. So a commit is an individual change to a file or a set of files. Uh, it's like when you save a file. Uh, so you save it to your hard drive and then when you commit, you're actually saving it out to GitHub after you perform a sync. The final definition here is for a pull request. So a pull request, it has proposed changes to a repository that's submitted by you, and then it's accepted or rejected by a repository's collaborators. And uh, pull requests do have each of their own discussion forms. So once you create a pull request, then you can talk about it and discuss the changes and everything like that. Now you see, it says accepted or rejected. We generally do try. We really encourage pull requests. We want community participation. And if your first revision isn't right, then we'll just continue working through that forum that it creates and go back and forth and talk about your code at length. And, um, and I'll go through that later on in the presentation. So next what I'm going to do is show you around the DBA tools and DBA reports website so that you can get a feel for what you would be contributing to. So I created the dbatools.io website because I wanted to reach more people. And for me, initially, I was intimidated by GitHub. You know, I was just like, can you just show me where to download? Just show me a zip. Where is it at? I didn't want to mess with cloning or even understand it. And I figured that, that it would really hurt adoption of DBA tools if people had to understand GitHub first. So I created the website. It's, it's kind of fancy. It, it has, um, it even has a video where you can watch a SQL server migration. Oh, and just to clarify, DBA tools, it is a PowerShell module uh, that kind of revolves around instance migrations and best practice implementations. Uh, it's a really fun project and it's really useful for DBAs. And we're really excited as a team to be changing the world of SQL server. And speaking of team, so as you can see here, again, I encourage pull requests and development participation. And what I really wanted to do was highlight if you are a major contributor to the project, I want to get your face out there because there, it's so cool. This is genuinely a team project. Uh, one of my favorite things that happened, and I'll show everyone here. So one of my favorite things that happened was this guy, Jacob, he submitted get last known good DBCC. And I ran that before going out to the MVP summit. And I was like, this command is so cool. I wish that we had get last backup or get DBA because we use the prefix DBA, get DBA last backup. So I put in uh, a request for it. And by the time that I got back, I had a pull request from Klaus and he had totally done exactly what I needed. So within a few days of returning, I was able to run his command against my entire estate and see all of, you know, my full backups, my differentials and my logs. And I was really excited about that. So yeah, we do want to highlight the work of everyone. We actually have a LinkedIn too where if you become a major contributor, then you can become a part of the team. So if we go here, so we have 13 employees listed on LinkedIn. And here you can see everyone and whenever you go to their profile, then it will show their work. And this is a lot of really great work for your resume and for the community. And we're really excited about that. So DBA reports is the sister project to DBA tools. So we focus on kind of live things like uh, best practices and instance migrations and DBA reports is an inventory tool and it's super cool. It was started by Rob Sewell. And when I saw his presentation on this, I was like, dude, we have to get together and get this out there. So we created an auto installer. And then like what it does is it, it has PowerShell commands in SQL agent that go out to each each of the uh, SQL servers and it gets information like, you know, the last backups, the disk space and things like that. And then it puts it into Power BI reports and, and SSRS reports. And with the Power BI, he even has a 
video where he shows himself using Cortana with Power BI and his estate for SQL Server. It's just, it's super cool. So if you go to dbareports.io slash YouTube, that goes to our YouTube channel. It's the SQL Server Community Collaborative YouTube channel where we show you how to work around this. So he also has a team page. So here we are, and you'll notice that there aren't as many major contributors. And the reason is because this is a newer project. So we really wanna get more people involved in DBA reports. If you have anything to contribute PowerShell, um, uh, SSRS experience, Power BI experience, uh, or if you're a DBA, you wanna let us know what it is that you would like out of this project, we would love to have you. And you can join our Slack. Uh, there's information on each of the the websites about slack channel and i'll be showing you around there too because you know slack and trello both of them are really important for collaborating together and it's really cool we talk to each other all day every day you know there's always somebody in the channel and we are constantly working on this and and slack is a really big part of this so once the whole project once you put it together it's really this it has testing it has continuous integration it's it's a really great way to learn more about the devops world and now i am going to show you around the sql server community collaborative github organization so this is our organization it has primarily dba tools and dba reports we also just got the ssis reporting pack we have invoke sql cmd2 and then we have some dba tools templates so whenever you start working on dba tools then you can start with a template and go from there now, what I'm going to be doing, I'll show you around the repository, and then I'm going to be following along with this wiki entry on the DBA tools repository called your first pull request. So first I'm going to show you around and then we'll come back and let me close all the other tabs and open this up. So whenever you first start working with a project on GitHub, you're going to want to look at the contributing.md if it's available. And contributing.md, people have different purposes for it. For me, I want to let people know it's not a set of rules. It is, here's how you can join. We want you to contribute and here's how you do it. It lets you know how you can become a major contributor. It lets you know where we're hanging out so that you can join and, and talk if you would like, or if you just want to see the work. So if you go to Trello, this has all of our work that we're doing. It's just, it's so cool because there's so many community members that are involved here and we're really working to make this a super amazing tool set. If you want to add new commands and features, so we say, this is how we like people to add new commands. And then we go through that. Here's some, some specifics on the coding style that we prefer. This is how you send your pull request. And you know, we talk about bug triaging and, uh, and things like that, and just different ways to participate and become a major contributor. And so the, the contributing.md is available in a lot of repositories. So if you want to start participating, that's always something to look out for. Then you can also, if you'd like, just read the intro. This shows you a couple different ways. If you recall, whenever earlier I had talked about why I created dbatools.io and there is a downloads page and it shows you how to, you can download the zip directly from GitHub or you can install it from the PowerShell gallery or if you don't have access to the PowerShell gallery, you could just copy and paste this and that will work. So when you're first starting to work on a project, the first thing that you could do is drop by and check out the issues. So you can look through all of the issues and see if there are any that you are interested in. Issues, they don't necessarily have to be bugs. Uh, they could also be feature enhancements and things like that. So if you want, you can go through and say, oh, you know, I know, I know how to fix, you know, SQL Server 2000 to 2008 R2, which is probably just putting in a warning message saying not possible. So yeah, you can go through the issues or if you're looking through the tool set and you're like, hey, I have this thing that, uh, this bug that I would like to fix, then you can just proceed with your first pull request. So let's go ahead and start following the 
tutorial, which is listed here. And you can see there's eight basic steps. I really tried to make this as simple as possible. And, uh, and I got it down to about eight steps. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is you could just Google GitHub desktop. Now there are ways of course, to interact with GitHub or get through the command line. And I know that I'm a PowerShell MVP command line is my jam, but whenever it comes to GitHub, I don't really want to learn the specifics right now. I just want to start working right now and GitHub desktop makes that really easy. So it works on Mac. It works on windows. You could just download GitHub desktop. So here, I'm just going to open it up and, uh, and act as though I just, it's just an EXE or a DMG or whatever, and you just install it. And then here you open it up to this blank page. Now, what you want to do is you go to the DBA tools repository. And if you remember earlier, we had talked about forking the project. So this is on SQL collaborative DBA tools, but I am control bold. Now I tried to be control B for bold, but it was taken. That's my hacker name. <laughs> my wife gave it to me because I'm bold. All right. So, um, this is my repository and I am going to fork this and I, I was practicing and I did it already. So I'm just going to say, put it here. I am a member of PSConf EU organization. So you usually don't get this prompt. You usually just go right to forking. So we'll do it to control bold DBA tools. And now if you see there's control bold DBA tools and it's forked from SQL collaborative DBA tools. And when you first open up GitHub, you will be prompted to log in with your username and password. And once you do that and you're logged in, just come here and make sure that you put your email because that way, whenever you contribute code, you can show up in the contributors list once it gets to the master repository. Now that I have forked this project to my own repository, I want to clone it to my own computer. So what we're going to do is just open in desktop. And a lot of people ask me, Hey, where do you put this? Well, I certainly don't put it in any of my paths. I want to put it in somewhere that's really easy to access whenever I'm programming. So I just put it in C colon backslash GitHub backslash DBA tools. I don't put it in my PowerShell path in documents and I don't put it in my PowerShell path in program files or work from it straight from there because I don't want to get confused. And I always want it to load up this uh, live thing that I'm working on this clone. So I'm going to select GitHub and whenever it's cloning. So check this out. How are there 4,033 objects? It's because it's not just the files because there's not 4,000 files in this. There's uh I don't know. I would say that there's like maybe 170. The reason is because there's a hidden directory that keeps track of all the deltas. Uh, it's super cool. I don't know a whole lot about it, but that's why there look, it looks like there's so many objects, but they're not here. They're actually hidden. All right. So now that we have cloned the repository, let's just go ahead and look at it again. DBA tools. And when I start my PowerShell, now I kind of program PowerShell. I, I just, I open up my console a whole bunch of times per day. A lot of people like the ISC. I use the Sapien PowerShell studio, and then I just open up whenever I want to execute a command. I don't do it from PowerShell studio or the ISC. I just want to start fresh and I use PowerShell. If you want to do it, that's the way that you could do it. So one thing that I do is notepad profile. This is my profile. So I import C colon backslash GitHub backslash DBA tools um, and I force it. And the reason is because if I accidentally install DBA tools in my path somewhere, this will ensure that it's always uh, overridden. And that the one that I'm working with is the one that's coming from my GitHub repository. So if you remember before, we talked about how a fork is still attached to the base. 
And you can see that here. Now with DBA tools, we work in development. And so anytime that you submit a pull request, it will be to the development branch. And whenever you sync, you're going to want to sync from the development branch because that's where we add new commands first and, and new functionality. You know, so if you need a new dynamic parameter or anything like that, then you can just sync it and, um, and it's, it's way easier than imagine downloading the zip over and over again and extracting it, you know, and, and, and having that. So instead you can just hit sync and it'll go and get it. So the first thing that you want to do is go there and you want to change your branch up here. So for me, I don't work in the master. Now, remember this is control bold master. It doesn't really matter, but I just always keep it development and then development again. And you can see there have been no updates. If there were, then I would just say update. It would go to our development branch and it would update my uh, DBA tools local clone. Now, the next thing that you're going to want to do is before you go forward, you kind of want to explore the code, right? And what you'll notice if you are familiar with PowerShell modules is that this is a module. Um, and if you are working with GitHub and you're putting your own module out there, I highly recommend that the root of, of your repository be the, like it has to be completely dedicated. Uh, this will make it easier for your contributors. And it's also easier to do automated installs like this. We have an automated install. So yeah, I, it's the way that the PowerShell team does it. It's the way that we do it. If you're creating a module, you're putting it on GitHub, use the repository as your root. Now you may be wondering, hey, why didn't you just make this a PS1? When I first started working with PowerShell very in depth, I was just creating PS1s and people are like, hey, make this a module. And I was thinking, why? You're just gonna have to import the module and then you are going to have to execute the command. Why not just execute the command straight off? And then as I realized that start SQL migration was actually a wrapper for a number of commands, then the module came into play. Now, what I love about modules is that they can have access to internal or private functions that you don't have to export. A lot of times whenever people come and they start working on DBA tools, they'll be like, hey, Connect SQL Server doesn't work. And the reason is because Connect SQL Server is an internal command. So this command is available to the module in this environment that the module creates, but it's not available to the end user. So if you, even if you import DBA tools, let's, let's do it right now. So we'll import module DBA tools and we'll stick a force on there. So if we do a git command module DBA tools, and then if we want any of the connect commands, you'll see that there's connect DBA SQL server, which is a different command and there's no connect SQL server. However, all of our commands, if you go inside of the functions, then you will see that um, that they connect SQL server. So this allows, like, I don't want to burden you guys with all of these internal commands whenever as like it, as an end user, you don't need invoke SMO check. You don't need join admin UNC. You don't need all of these things, but these are commands that are available to you as a developer for DBA tools. It's pretty cool. And you know, that's the difference. If you're not a formal programmer, you may hear public and, and private functions. And, um, and that's kind of our functions, all of our private, all of our public functions go here. So this is what the end user is going to see. And then all of the other functions go in internal. We also have a bunch of pester tests, which is really exciting. Rob Sewell is working on this part. I don't really know much about Pester, but I'm really excited about the possibilities. Uh, we are going to be setting up an Azure lab that performs migrations and does all of this stuff and it's automated. So anytime that there's a pull request to ensure that the, that the merge 
uh, you know, if we approve the pull request and we merge it into our source code, that it doesn't break anything. So that's super exciting. Now, the next thing that I want to introduce you to are branches. We had talked earlier about branches. And if you recall, we have this. So here's the development branch and here's a whole bunch of other branches that were made by our team. And I'm going to show you how cool branches are and why I started using them. So we have the master, right? That's the one that's for the public. And then we have development and the de development gets merged into master a, a couple times per month. But what if I want to work on a new command? So let's just pretend that we want to work on a new command called uh, show demo, uh, DBA demo. Uh, show DBA GitHub demo. That got kind of long, whatever. We're going to do it. Okay. So here's how it works. First, you start your editor of choice. So I'm going to do PowerShell Studio. You know, actually, that might introduce some complexity. So I'm just going to use some Notepad. Now I am going to go to the uh, repository to get a template. So we go to the SQL Collaborative and we look at DBA Tools Templates. And let's do Super Basic. So I'm going to raw. So this is, you could just copy and paste from here and paste. And then I'm going to replace verb DBA noun with show DBA GitHub demo replace all I'm going to work on all of my help. I'm going to make this really useful command, uh, write output, write output source server dot net name. This is going to connect to the SQL server that I pass it. And then it will, um, it'll just show its network name. All right. So where do you put this? First, before you go and do any saves, let's create a new branch. This is going to be new command and you can name it whatever you want. I like to name it, uh, you know, bug fix, new command, etc. It helps you keep track and it should be kind of descriptive. So GitHub demo and we're going to branch it from development. We'll create this new branch and then we'll put this back again because uh, that's development because sometimes you just have to do that. All right. So now we are back. Now you see this publish. Some people publish immediately and then just commit repeatedly. Some do wait a while for me. I want to publish it because I want it to get out to GitHub and off of my computer because there's nothing worse than, you know, working on something and then it disappears. So I kind of see GitHub also in addition to version history and stuff like that. I also see it as kind of a backup. So we will make a couple changes and then we will publish. Now we are back there. We are going to save it in C GitHub DBA tools functions. Paste that dot PS one and our PSM that is in the root will immediately pick that up. So the PSM basically says get everything here and here and, and import it. So you just add that file there. So now we have it. Now, if you were to just leave it like this, the rest of the commands uh, would have access to show DBA GitHub demo. But in this case, we want to export that so that the end user can see the command and execute it. So let's do a, so we're going to do that again. And I'll just show you that there's a couple shows, but there's no show GitHub. All right. So none appear. If you want to see some of our shows that we got, oops. So <laughs> There we go. So if you want to see some of our shows, there we have those things. Okay. Now we are going to open up the PSD one. If you have never seen a module manifest, look, all you got to do is copy and paste 
and then also change your GUID and then just Google uh, new GUID PowerShell. It's uh, it's just a single command. I'll output a GUID and then you can copy and paste into there. If you're making your own module, I, I just, I really love the whole module environment. So here's all of our exported. So you see there's functions to export. And if you go down, these are all of our functions. And then you'll see commandlets to export. And you might say, hey, I thought that you made a command. Why is it exporting a function? Uh, this was something that was news to me when I first started working with PowerShell. I thought that I was making commandlets. As it turns out, whenever you program PowerShell and just like a .ps1 and it's you know clear text and you can read it and everything like that, it's not compiled, that is a function. Whenever you use C Sharp to make PowerShell uh, commands, then that is a commandlet. Uh, I just call them both commands and leave it at that. So it's rare that you'll hear me uh, say commandlet um, unless I'm referring to something that was compiled in C Sharp. So now we have pasted this in, we've saved our file. Once we close out PowerShell, open it back up, it automatically imported. So when we run this, we can see, hey, there's now a new command. Now let's go here and see that in this branch, there are changes. There are two changes. One, must not be committed to the repository. We are the only ones to make changes to the PSD one. So you can either just leave this unchecked permanently and never check it in, or you can discard changes. Now, once you discard your changes, it won't be exporting the, the command anymore. So I usually do this uh, towards the end. Now, what you do see is your brand new command. Let's actually just uh, show DB <laughs> GitHub demo and see if this works. SQL Server, SQL 2016. Did it work? Oh, there we go. And there's its net name, SQL 2016. All right, so we have a working command here. So we have a commit message. Now your commit messages should be informative. This one is just gonna say initial commit and we're going to commit. Now you see that it says publish. It doesn't yet say sync. I sync all the time. And what you want to do is publish new branch to remote. So now we have synced it. And if we go and we look at our repository, and we go, we can see our new repo, our, our new branch. So here is our new branch with new command, GitHub demo. All right. And again, we have this lone PSDBA tools. All right, so here's something I'm really excited to show you that happens. Whenever you're working with branches, you have these different copies of your file system, right? And so let's go ahead and order by date modified. And uh, we're going to switch branches. Now I believe that it's gonna tell me that I can't switch until I modify that. Let's see. Oh, it didn't. All right, so did you notice this? Let's go back here. Let's go from development back to GitHub demo. Boom, it shows up again. And let's do a search for my Ola. So SQL collaborative slash Ola. Oh, there we go. All right. So what I want to do is discard the changes. And again, I'll have to put those back, but never commit them uh, if I want to work from it. So let's go look at the Ola branch. Because I know that that has quite a number of, uh, of new files. So you can see actually a whole bunch disappeared. Uh, before we had about 100 commands. Now we have only 85 items. And um, we have here Ola database backup. So whenever you start switching between commands, these are different workspaces entirely. So it's like working with really isolated directory structures and you can switch between them and you don't have to, you know, copy and paste and use a zip and do all of this stuff. Just switch between your branches. Boom. So you'll see it went from 85 to 98 and that's just by changing your branch over and over again. Let's see our new one. 
There's the GitHub demo. Let's make it disappear because it's not in the development branch yet. And how freaking awesome is that? So now you say, hey, I have this new command that I'm really excited to show you. I have coded up a storm. I've committed to my branch. I haven't committed the PSD1 file. Now I want to sync up. So let's go and I sync all day. So you come here, you don't want to update from master. You want to go to SQL, let's see, development. Okay, we want to sync. That goes and it gets everything. So in the meantime, if a, if a team member has committed some of their code, then this will just sync it back to yours. You don't have to download a zip. You don't have to do anything like that. You just hit sync. It goes, it gets the code from there. Now what we want to do, we've, we've created this new command. We want to create a pull request. Oh, before we create the pull request, actually, Let's change a little something so that you could see some additional benefits. So it says this has been modified. And you know, we always see this prompt whenever there's a change to a file that happens in the background. If you are changing your branches a lot, your editor will say, hey, I noticed that you changed this because as you saw, it did change the file system. So I'm gonna say no, that way it's easy. Um, now let's make a change. Instead of the net name, let's just get the name. They are both going to say the same thing. Or how about, um, I don't know. Let's see what is in S. So S is my SMO server. Now, whenever I hit S, SMO is not slow. Right now, it's just enumerating so much stuff, but it's really rare that you're ever going to enumerate like this. But for me, I just want to get some of the properties. So I'm letting it go through there. So this is fun. Let's see which one I would like to show. All right, let's see the service account. Everybody wants to know the service account. So we'll copy that and we'll paste it in and check this out. So if I just do s.service account, notice like it doesn't take any time like it did with the enumeration. All right, so now we've changed that there. And when we come here, GitHub has noticed that I have changed it from net name to service account. So it shows that that line has been deleted and replaced. And what I want to do is I want to say uh, changed output from net name to service account. And I'm going to commit. So I'm still committing to my new command, GitHub demo. I'm syncing. So now it is pushing it out to my repo. And now we can look at the history. Now what I really love about GitHub for Windows is... So we could do this. Let's let's run this command again. So I'm closing it, opening up. It's going to import it. And now we're going to show it. Oh, no. Oh, hey, it's because I had changed my PSD1 file. So let's change this back. I'm going to save it again. Oops. So I just saved it. Um, and I'm going to open this. And now it showed the service account instead. Now what I could do is, oh man, I did not mean to do that. I actually did need the net name so I can just revert. So I revert and then I sync and now it puts it back. And if you accidentally commit the PSD1 file, then you can just revert that change. So we just reverted it and that again shows that. And what we'll do is we'll close this. And boom, it's back to net name instead of the service account. So, all right, let's discard that change because I just don't want to mess. I'm already ready to perform my pull request. Now, the pull request should be informative. First and foremost, it should go to development. So if you type in devel, it should go to other branches, SQL collaborative slash development, and that will send it to our repo. So I'm going to say, um, uh, show GitHub demo fixes. And if you're, if you are submitting uh, a fix, you could say like fixes number 233 or whatever the number is, but in, in 
this case, I'm just going to, you know, I think I'm just going to perform the pull request and, uh, and then apologize to all of my team members because I'm doing this live or you know what I'll do? I'll reject it. All right. So now it's creating the pull request and now I'm saying, Hey, here is my new command. SQL collaborative slash DBA tools, you know, you're the formal person who, or you're the formal organization who has this module, please accept my changes. Now, I just want to clarify that what I'm about to do is being done as a SQL collaborative admin. So unfortunately, I didn't uh, use two different accounts. I both submitted a pull request and now I'm going to play the part of the SQL collaborative members uh, who look at the code and perform the review. So somebody goes and they say, Hey, what is this? Let me check out the files that are changed. Oh, snap. You forgot to update. Oh, these are bad examples. Oh, you know what? Ooh, we're really nice whenever we do the code reviews. So it'll generally start out like this. Oh, how about this? So original author, thanks so much for contributing a new command. <laughs> um, you forgot to update yourself as the original author. So then I start a review and you know, if there's something that doesn't work out, uh, like let's say this variable is never used, uh, you can remove it and, uh, and can be removed. So again, I want to be as polite as possible because I sincerely appreciate every single pull request that comes in. So what we do is we add a review comment. We, and then, oh shoot, I can't approve it because it's my own pull request. So I'll just submit a review. Um, because I am the administrator for this, so what I'm going to do is make a comment. Oh, so what you'll notice is that we do have tests that are being run in the background. These are mostly syntax checks. This one will probably fail because I didn't submit uh, a proper command, but what I'm going to do, and this is very unusual. I'm going to close the pull request without uh, pulling it in. What we want to do generally is, as you can see here, whenever it said it, it creates a forum for each of the pull requests. So we just have conversations that go back and forth. Oh, you're right. I didn't notice. So, you know, we'll, we'll go back and forth until the pull request is at a state where we do want to merge it into development. And then at some point during the month, we're going to merge that into master. So there's the conversation. Ultimately, this was just for a demo. So we will close it without merging. Usually we will do the merging, the pull request. Um, now here's something that, that I also, so we have a review that's required. So one of the, uh, the SQL collaborative members and, and anyone is, is welcome to become a member. There is a review of the code that's required. Now me and a couple others will do a follow-up review of the code and then we will approve it. And then we also have, so merging is blocked until that happens. So we do have some protections on the branches. You cannot commit to our master branch. Even if you are a SQL collaborative member, we just, we do put, put those protections there. There's just a few of us that can commit to master and the same goes for development. It has to be a pull request and to development. You can't go straight there. So I'm going to close and comment. So we have closed this pull request, but generally you can see here, like, let's go and look at the pull requests. We have 231 that were closed. Uh, you can see this one was rejected and, um, I rejected my own a bit ago. And so here's all of our pull requests. So that's basically it. We just looked at how to create a new command, add it to our own repository, and then create a pull request from there.
And I do want to emphasize that you always want to work with the, the SQL Collaborative branch. Set that as your base. Now, if you ever see this highlighted, then that's something uh, that you'll want to do and, and bring in our files. Uh, so just one more thing that I forgot to mention in the demo, and that's updating a pull request. So any subsequent commits that you make to your branch, it's going to automatically update the pull request in the repository. And that means that you don't have to make any additional PRs if you do change anything in your file and commit that. And then also, so just to be clear, you can continue to make changes and add features until the PR is accepted or rejected, and it'll all go under that same PR. So thank you so much for joining me for this. Uh, we do have additional videos, and this one will be posted at dbatools.io slash YouTube. That will bring you to the SQL Server Community Collaborative uh, YouTube channel. Uh, SQLPS.io slash YouTube is the SQL Pass PowerShell Virtual Chapters YouTube. And there we have about 23 or so videos if you are interested in working with PowerShell and SQL Server. And we are also on Slack as a community. And so if you go to dbatools.io slash Slack, you can get an invite to the SQL Community Slack. And there we have DBA Tools and DBA reports. So we do a lot of work in here. Uh, we talk about design, we talk about code, about how to best approach things. There's also integration with GitHub. So GitHub will let us know what's going on with the repository. There's also DBA reports. Uh, DBA reports has all of the talk and the integration from GitHub and everything that DBA tools does and, uh, so yeah, this is our Slack. Thank you so much for joining. Let me know if you have any questions. I am again, not a GitHub expert, but I hope that that kind of showed you what the process is for creating a pull request into a repository. And if you have any advanced questions, you can come into our channel. We have a super GitHub expert named CK that will uh, probably know the answer and be eager to help.